Here we go. So here we are, Carol, and I'm going to take us live on Facebook, which is going to work this time. Um, okay, yes, we want the public to see it. We're going to share it to the page. And away we go. We're going to pretend this is working. The city of Bow. Yeah, it's a Yates poem. It's a on oh, that uh, makes that one Kula, yeah, Kula Press. Um, so we are now live on Facebook as well, allegedly. Right here we go. <laughs> here we go through the magic of technology. Welcome everyone, and um, it looks like the Facebook Live button has worked this time, so that's fantastic. I'm Jennifer Drennan, librarian of the Patrick J. Dowling Library at the United Irish Cultural Center in San Francisco. Welcome to. I haven't even been counting, but I think we're approaching our twelfth episode of Biscuits and Books. I'm trying to remember when Anne and I started this little project. But with me today is one of the library's volunteers, Carol Thornton, and she has been volunteering here at the library for years um, and thankfully has studies Irish and is absolutely invaluable when you know, with working with the Irish language collection and the Irish language donations uh, that we receive, because if it were just up to Google Translate and I, well, <laughs> that would not be good. <laughs> that would, it would be interesting, but <laughs> maybe not so beneficial. <laughs> yeah, it, it would definitely make uh, whether or not I'm adding to the collection properly uh, questionable, but you're so knowledgeable about the history and subjects around Ireland, plus to have your knowledge of the Irish language here in the library is just fantastic. And, where am I good, Jennifer? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the only thing I can think to say to that is third in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of my handful of French phrases left over from all those years. So where would you like to start? Because we've got some exciting things on the table. Carol has been working uh, diligently with our, another volunteer, Joe, processing some Irish language uh, books that were donated by one of our lovely local families. And it looks like there might be a duplicate or two to make available on the book cart for those of you who were asking when we were going to have more Irish language books available. So what do you want to start with, Carol? What have you got? Well, you want to see the books first? Oh. I, I, you can, I can show them, you know, I can play Vanna to, okay, you know. Here we go. Here we go. Right there. It's a, a book of short stories by his man, our man, Audrey Pierce. Oh, oh, look at this artwork, you guys. Isn't that awesome? Dual language book, so that means I can read the back. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't think so. I mean. If, if you could, if you took took home some of our, our Irish language <laughs> uh, tutorial books and you could get up to speed quickly, I'm yeah. sure. So what do you want to tell us about this one? Well, Patrick Pierce is, a, you know, a well-known person in the 1916 rebellion and one of the leaders and also a teacher. And uh, he was a writer and wrote these short stories, quite lovely short stories. Oh. And I, there's translations in English also, but mm -hmm. this one happens to be in Irish. Yeah, I know we, we have some translations here uh, as part of the regular collection, which, you know, if people want to come uh, when the library is open and you can just drop in now on Friday late afternoons uh, from 3 to 5.30 and on uh, most Saturdays. Um, the usual 1.30 to 4.30, although there's some discussion uh, with the April schedule being what it is, we may have some morning hours uh, available instead of the afternoon, but I will post that on our accounts, on our social media accounts and on the uh, center's calendar as soon as, soon as we um, so as soon as we can, have that settled. Folks can come in and read the books here. Mm -hmm or take one home with you. So now when you were researching this one and discovered it was a duplicate, so we can offer it, what did you find out um, about its pricing? 
Well, I checked on um, this one. Uh, I was uh, in dollars, so it was from Biblio. Oh, okay. Uh, um, they had they had copies of it for sale and about twenty dollars. Okay, that. super. And you know, as always, if you see a title here. Uh, that we mention, you're welcome to email me, uh, drop it in the chat. I'm going to try to keep the Facebook Live on a split screen and not crash everything if I see uh, a message in there um, to try to respond to. It's, it's brave new world. I need to learn new tricks. So that's awesome, Carol. Thank you. Sure. He's quite a popular writer and as well as this yeah. very famous so. politician. Available, available, available now. What else have you got for us? Well, what else we have? Oh, this you could talk about this fellow. This oh, this I this is a very interesting you book know, that you found out. You gave me a heads up on this play, and thank you for that. I'm going to let you pronounce the uh, title and author because I can't. So the it's a play, Hornacht de Honak. Um, the Io Owen O'Tourisk and mm -hmm. Jennifer did this great research on the author and, and found out about the play itself, which is quite interesting. Yeah, it was really interesting. And I love the cover on this with the, the mallet and the face kind of in a, a watercolor wash. Um, here, I'll let you hold that because I can't be trusted to do th two things at once. Um, so this play was first produced in 1979. And the notes that I found is it's an inter interrogation. Interrogation? Inter uh, two R's. Inter well, interrogation of the legacy of the 1916 revolutionary. Patrick Pierce, who we were just discussing. And in this case, in the play, a disillusioned sculptor called Pierce is hiding from a crime of violence. And he questions the legacy of Patrick Pierce and whether his spirit and ideology are a force for good or evil. And like I said, the play was first performed in 1979 and is described as a scathing look at Irish society, uh, potentially still relevant today. Um, and there was a multimedia production from Anne Tab. Oh gosh, I should have written this down for you. T A I B H D H E R E A R C and Power. Maybe, mm -hmm. uh, but it was performed with uh, it was multimedia production and performed with English subtitles. And so perhaps we could say the. The title in oh, English was and the, an interesting title. Yeah, the, the way um, Galway.ie translated it, uh, it's Naked I Saw You is, is the title of the play. And what did you find? Oh, go ahead. Intriguing. Very intriguing. Very title. intriguing. And sounds sounds like it's potentially still very topical. What did you find out about its pricing when you were doing the research? I found out that it was priced at $20 at Biblio again. Okay, Biblio is uh, turning out to be a great resource and I'm looking forward to when we can start listing some of our books on Biblio as well. That, mm -hmm. that is a lot closer in the works than it has been, uh, but we're not quite there yet. So what else do you have for us, Carol? Well, this is one of our many um, Irish, te teaching yourself Irish books. Oh, fantastic. We have quite a, I think quite a few duplicates also that Folks are interested in learning the Irish language. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of resources here to do it. If, and there's a community here of Irish speakers or yeah. trying to be Irish speakers. <laughs> speakers and, and learners both, right? Yes, yes. And we're always, you know, trying to get more people involved in her conversation and yeah. such like that. So if anybody's interested, yeah. contact us. Well, I remember when the classes were held upstairs on the weekends, then several people would come down to the library after class and use the resources here in the library yeah. uh, for further study or uh, to test their their newly 
acquired literacy on right. some of the novels and nonfiction that, that we have in the Irish language here. Yes, and we had the Irish weekends, the language weekends. It was yeah. great fun. Even the classes were down. Some of the classes were down. Several of them were, were here in the library. We had teachers from all over now here and all over the country and from Ireland. Well, hopefully them. that's something as things loosen up, if we continue to manage our new reality. Hopefully Indeed. we'll be able to bring that back. Indeed. That Indeed. was that was a lot of fun, I know. Yes. So um, as you were researching that one, I know we, we have a copy here, but what did you find? Uh, when was it published? Uh, well, this one is called Teach Yourself. It's part of the Teach Yourself books, Teach Yourself Irish. And um, well, it's from um, 1961. And, um, it looks like whoever had this did not use it much. But, but <laughs> I was noticing the spine seemed nice and tight. Yes. I'm not seeing dog ears on the edges. <laughs> so it, it, yes, it's, a lot of our books are in that, in that I think people have the best intentions. And then right. really, it is a challenging language. And if you don't have a group of people that are doing it, it can be kind of um, difficult, challenging to learn it on your own. If you right. Know. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm constantly springing things on you and <laughs> Joe and anybody else that'll listen. Like, what is it? Am I saying this right? <laughs> Am I remembering this word right? You know, I think I'm up to 12 words. <laughs> well, there's a great website for pronunciation if you ever want to do that. It's mm -hmm. changlin.ie. Oh, okay. And it has not only it has a uh, grammar and but the pronunciation is very good because it has oh. the three different dialects Ulster, Munster, and Connacht. Oh, really good. Some are some are some of the most of the words are pretty much the same, but there are stark differences in some of the some oh, okay. Of the words, so. What's that website? Maybe I'm I'm gonna be brave and try to drop it in the chat. Changlin, it's T E A N G T E A N G L A N N L A N N dot, dot I E. N N it's a dot great I E. And this is there we go. Let's well, nothing's crashed yet, so <laughs> that's that's a good that's a good start a good, yeah great this is a new yeah we're trying new tricks today awesome and when you looked that up um what can somebody expect to find that on the card for about 20 dollars. About 20 okay so the irish language books are kind of falling in that in that range so far right, right. <laughs> awesome thank you uh oh <laughs> i've never taken a formal class but even i recognize this next name <laughs> well I, I will preface it by i was just pulling some books off the shelf that might give a synopsis of what what we have here and there as i said there's a big collection of irish grammar irish learning various right. forms of that and there's also irish literature both current and old and mm -hmm. one of the old ones that many people <laughs> know, <and laughs> I wouldn't say, I, there's probably some folks who love it, but not, it was a book that was, I think, um, kids in school in Ireland were forced to read it. And it's very, um, Peg was a famous storyteller and she was also, I guess we would say currently very depressed and mm. books are very, sad <laughs> she okay. had a very sad life wow and so you can imagine a 10 year old reading this very sad life book and what the what impact it would have right on him and his buddies so yeah. now i'm seeing um the call number on this one is 920 so um so this is her biography then so this is this about her or well, is this one uh, a collection of her stories Probably, well, her her stories are her life. Oh, That's okay. So the, so it's her telling yes. the stories of her life. Right. So it essentially is her biography right. that autobiography, these autobiography, yes. autobiography yes. that these kids were having to read. Right. And was that part of um, learning the Irish language? Was yes. translating? Right. You know, my mother told me that when she took French, um, she had to translate Colette. 
Oh my. And in Stockton. Oh. And the teacher would assign, you know, translate pages five through twelve. Skip. 13 through 17 oh. <laughs> translate and so of course everybody translated the pages they were supposed to skip first somehow i'm not sure that would work with no. peg's stories <laughs> poor peg I, and there's lots of um you can go online and see videos of her sitting in her chair rocking reading oh in irish of course so you can actually see her in action too yeah. I like that. I like that you would get that that more personable connection mm -hmm. with her. That might make it easier to hear the story than like to just read the text. Yeah, like. And that's on that's uh, part of our permanent collection. So um, anytime you want to come by and borrow it off the shelf within the confines of the library, you're welcome to. <laughs> and we may even, as we go through our other books, we may even have books out of it. Quite, used quite a lot yeah i know that well and i know there's quite a bit that you're still working through so we'll get to do this again carol has volunteered to to join us again sometime so that will be exciting well what else oh, oh now i know we were looking whoa. up we were talking about this one right before i realized it was four o'clock and we needed to start what have we got here well this is uh nora vime og which translates when I was young mm -hmm. and we looked up I couldn't I did research on the book just on the title uh -huh. and didn't find anything but Jennifer researched the author and found some interesting information that he was a translator is that it looks like he was he was a translator for a while um and correct my you Seamus I get because I have a cat at home from Seamus and we have our guard of Seamus but his last name is Ogriana? Did I say yes, that right? right? Ogriana. Ogriana. Okay. So um, what I found for the author himself is that he was born in Ranafast in uh, Donegal and educated locally. He qualified as a teacher in St. Patrick's College. And for this information, I'm using uh, literatureireland.com. I'm using their resources. He was born in 1889, uh, passed in 1968. And um, it, they go on to describe him as absorbing the rich oral traditions and folklore of the region in his Irish language works, some of which he wrote, interestingly enough, under the pseudonym Mare. My, Myra. Myra. M-A-I-R-E, is that? Yes, yeah, Myra. Myra. So I find it fascinating that a male author would use a female yes, that is. Yes. pseudonym. Now, now I'm curious about what the content of those stories are. But he, uh, his career as a writer spanned five decades. And here, Carol, if I turn this a little bit, maybe you can see what these titles are. I can pronounce, I think, the Modal Rashin, Rashin that was published in 1921, but uh, Kesslin, Kashli and Orr. And that was published in 1924. The, the, the Golden Castle. Ooh, I think. Oh, I think we, you know, I wonder if we, we have it. We do have we, it. We do, and we have a translation of that, I think. Oh, do we? I think so. I was reading the fiction the other day. Um, and then some other short stories. He was actually interred um, after the Irish Civil War because he had taken the Republican side. So he was interred between 1922 and 1924. Uh, later in 1932, he became a civil servant and worked as a translator for uh, one of the major publishing houses, Angum. And from what I understand, they pick up works from all over and translate them into Irish for uh, the Irish market. One of the children's books we have ah. was translated, which um, Imelda read for us. It's on the YouTube page. It was uh, Susie Esterhouse's uh, Gorilla. Oh, right. With, right. with her uh, photography. And so that was picked up and translated by Angum. And so we have it here in the library in, in the Irish. But uh, it goes on to say that he was critical of the government's Irish language policy. And in 1966 joined the language freedom movement, which opposed, and this is in italics, the forceful revival 
of Irish in schools. So he sounds like quite a character actually, and I'm hoping we have others of his works yes, on, yes, the, on the shelf. I'll look for it, yes. So, yes. But meanwhile, this one is a confirmed duplicate and so will be available. Um, so when I was young, that could potentially, so he was he would have been in his 20s or early 30s during the Civil War. The rising. The, and the rise and the rising. Oh, and 22. For 22, the yeah. Uh, with the uh, the signing of the Anglo-Irish Treaty. So this could be a really interesting memoir. Mm -hmm. Indeed. <laughs> Especially given um, some of his adventures shortly thereafter. <laughs> and it looks like, just glancing at it, mm -hmm. that the language is not super complicated. I, it looks like one could read it um, with a dictionary at hand, but mm -hmm. the grammar looks pretty straightforward. Some of the some of the writers, you know, the native speakers, the, the writing is rich and too rich for my blood. <laughs> you know, the grammar can be very convoluted and, and right. vocabulary that I'm not familiar. This seems like a accessible. Nice. Oh, good to know. Awesome. And then this one's still in the works. We haven't uh, finished processing it, but right. it will. It is appear on the cart. So it's so, so, so it will it will appear on the cart. Okay. So I'll make sure we keep that separate. It's, it is interesting. It brings up a point about the language. Kids in Ireland have to take Irish, mm -hmm. and most complain about it. But some really gravitate to it and have great lives because of it. It's yeah. an interesting. Well, I, just from what little I've seen, you know, and we we talked with Mankan Magan um, about this time last year, actually, uh, about his two books, uh, Shea Tamaguchi and uh, Thirty Two Words for Field, and just the words that he publishes and the descriptors for that so many different ways to describe the turf in the field the what's growing there or right. the, 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 the types of waves i can just imagine as a native speaker how rich that could be and how much of a challenge it would be for anybody trying to learn it it's yes, later on it's, it's very land-based yes because his books talk about land you know with the a hill would be described one way if it faces north, another way if it, a hill faces east, and if the turf is, you know, if the grass is big or small, and but and also for for folks who live by the ocean, by the sea, they have many different words for the kinds of waves that come in. Yeah, this, this you know big wave or it'll very different words. So it's very yes, yeah, fascinating. Yeah, I know. Um... I ended up, you know, we were lucky enough to, we got copies of, the, of both books for, uh, oh, there's Sheila, let her in. Um, one of our other volunteers is going to be joining us. That's awesome. Good. And so, uh, you know, we got copies of both for the library's collection. But the C. Tamaguchi book was so sweet, and it was done on a letterpress, you know, set by hand with wood blocks. So I got a copy for the house too because <laughs> I just couldn't resist. It was so beautifully done. So welcome, Sheila. Carol's here. We're talking about the Irish language books. I'm glad you could join us. So um, what else? Let's see. So this is part of the libraries. So we'll put that aside to shelf. What else did you pull out for us? Well, it's just a. Just a random book, Sean, uh, Sean O'Reirda book, Ahil August Ahilher. Pronunciation I'm still working on. This I could look up. Changlin would tell me how to pronounce these these words. Oh, okay. So, it's translated as life and work. Okay. So, so what what can you tell me about um, this work? Not much. I just kind of randomly pulled it off the shelf. It has an interesting has some photographs. It must be his maybe his autobiography. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, maybe because if I'm reading this right, this is with um, 
well, Julia Reedy, because it says Sean and Agos, uh, Julia Reedy, but I'm not, the next words after it, I don't recognize. Beautiful picture, though. Yeah, it's a great picture. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, oh, it's got, and it has music in it. So. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Even better, words and music. That's, yeah, so, you know, so, it doesn't yeah, get any so, better in Irish. So much to... So many interesting books here to just get lost in. Oh, yes, he has a whole bunch of photo, whole section on photographs. Of oh, and look at him. That must have been when he got a, his graduation portrait and some type of class. I don't know. If you, you can read the, the captions. But that's that one is clearly a graduation portrait. Oh, yes. The day he got his uh, college graduation, college degree. Nice. Now, just scanning a couple of pages, how would you compare this book um, in terms of accessibility and, and grammar structure? Well, this looks similar in terms of accessibility. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think I, I would compare it to PEG. Okay. As being, PEG would be more um, inaccessible, <laughs> more difficult if I could sit. Here she is. Yeah, she has she has a different grammar, mm -hmm. and different um, different vocabulary, different sentence structure that I would find more challenging to read. Than, okay, than those. So two. so his. Um, Let's see. Oh, and 920. Yes. So it is a, a, a biography. Because Dewey, I can read. <laughs> <laughs> Dewey, I cannot. <laughs> so, oh, now we were talking about this one just before the show. And this, we this is kind of interesting. If anybody's interested in learning um, the Irish names for uh, places around the world, it's right in here. Um, for example, Oh, if you want to learn how to say, um, oh my goodness, gorilla. <laughs> Is that one of those pages we don't <laughs> translate, teacher? You want to learn how to say <laughs> France in um, Irish. It's, mm -hmm. it's in here, Fran Frankish. And, um, and here, and, and again, there's a, it's a lot of place names. For example, you can learn how to, to see, to learn how to say inherited drainage. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, if you're having a land discussion with your neighbors, um, I can see where that would be. <laughs> Indeed. That would be a useful phrase Indeed. to have. Well, and also just as a way to describe a field. Yes. And they have, here's for grasslands, they have four or five different ways to say it. Mm -hmm. Tropical grasslands and yes, it's all. Uh, oh, so they really break it down too. Yes, I guess into specificity. And there were countries in there. Oh, there we go. How to say Pakistan, Peru, Tunis, Ukraine. And how do we say Ukraine? Ukraine. Okay. Yeah. So yes, it's a. Uh, um, oh, that's that's fabulous. And I'm going to figure out how to do this with my camera. And I saw some interesting charts in here. Let me see if I can find one and just show it off because um, it was one of the things that Anne always liked to do when, you know, when I was showing books, especially if we hadn't had a chance to meet beforehand. She'd be like, okay, so what pictures, what illustrations are in there? What, you know, what have you got going on inside the page? There we go, as I make everybody seasick. But it's got, uh, oh my. So what would this chart be? See. Now, now that I've fanned everybody uh, with it. Well, it's a, the compass. Oh. But I don't, oh, well here, the, uh -huh. the these T, D, this is twish cart, is the north. Okay. Deshkart is the south. Irhar is the, oh gosh, west, I believe. Okay. Irhar is the east. Okay. Or it might be the other way around. Okay. So, so this would be Tishkart. 
and this would be oh like and then north northeast north northwest north northeast so maybe so earhar is is east east or earhar okay. earhar is west okay oh and the way is to say all the gradations right wow so cool. there you go ah so would you you can give very specific directions I, 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 once I, you master that chart I try to listen to a radio and a gel talk every morning. Mm -hmm. They have the news and they have the news. They'll say, they'll say the news and they'll say, Shinawil on Tishkart, which means that's it from the north. Then they'll say the news and then they'll say, Shinawil on Deshkart, that's it from the south. Oh, okay. I've just started listening to uh, Gail talk here in the library and it's fun. Uh, it's fascinating some of the music that they play. <laughs> if you listen at, I think it's like three o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. they, three to four, they have this like techno music. This there's this very there's the very, techno, and then I don't know uh, if that's what it's called. There's a talk show. Yeah, it, it's more electronic. But then um, one afternoon I had it on, and they were playing. I, oh, you were here. It was just before you got here. They were playing American soundtracks from spaghetti westerns. <laughs> oh, right. Yes. Yes. I mean, they, I, I, so you're hearing all the spaghetti western tracks, but then they're introduced and discussed in Irish in between. It's, it is funny. Yes. And I think when we're listening to great. it, it's like three in the morning there or something. So they're putting in yeah. a lot of their. Yeah. But it's fun too because sometimes it's traditional music and sometimes it's sport. Oh, right. Yes. You know, and that cadence, you know, there's nothing like an athletic announcer. It, oh, right. Narrating a live game. <laughs> <laughs> In Irish. <laughs> and yeah, I have no idea what the game is. I don't know what's happening, but I know it's exciting. And he's very, yes, he's very excited. <laughs> so it's it's a lot of fun. And it, it's definitely caught the attention of you know, some people that are like, wait, you're Irish? Yes. No, I don't know what it's saying. <laughs> and for a long time, I would hear these this person come on and say, um, scale a boss. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I know that scale means story and boss means death. And I couldn't figure out what they were talking about. And so I asked my Irish teacher and she said they give out death notices. Oh. So they would say scale, scale a boss, and then you would hear a name and a place where they were from. And so like our were. obituary. Yeah. But, but a little biography about on the person. Yeah. The person. Oh, so fascinating. fascinating. So, yeah, it was really interesting. So. Yeah, that is interesting. <laughs> what else? I know you, you were doing some, some serious rummaging on the shelves. What else did you bring out? Well, just some, uh, 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 what do you call it? Dictionary, <laughs> you know, basic you right need to look up words and such. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, this is a real the, the the kind of the Bible of um, of dictionaries. For well, it's about that size. Yes, <laughs> and it's also online. I think on Changlin. So oh, yeah. Changlin has lots of lots of resources, resources. on that site. Oh, and it's, it's in the new, I don't know what the, you know, there's old Irish and modern Irish. Mm -hmm. And then modern Irish is broken up in to before in the 1950s. Okay. Um, like you can actually see a difference between these two. Oh, right. Can you see these? The, yeah. There's a, a term they call the bulia, mm -hmm. which is, can you hold that one? Yes. Um, this above the D, mm -hmm. that punk point, they used to call it the bulia. And my understanding is that when Ireland got, uh, it one had its civil war and became its own country, mm -hmm. most of it. Um, that they wanted to be on the big stage of Europe and right. they didn't have the money to make typewriters with oh. that. So they used, you know, European typewriters and those, so they had to change the language so to get rid of the bulia. Oh, so every time you see a bulia in this older form, you have to put an H 
oh. after the consonant. Okay, which because is, that's the, the that's sound it. that you get. Right, it's, yeah, so it's... Oh, interesting. I, I prefer, I wish they just kept the boolean because it just adds so much clutter almost to the words that... Mm. Well, let's, let's say. Yeah, because this edition that you brought out, uh, the Neil, Neil O'Donnell, um, oh, I thought I thought we had the date on here. This is a 1977 edition. Mm -hmm. And when was that one published? Oh, this one is, this is Deneen. Oh, that's oh. the Deneen. Uh, what's, what's it got for? 1927. Oh, okay. So yeah, it would, it would definitely be. But I understand they have um, updated the mean into the modern, the modern, okay, form. But it's is it uh, this Neil O'Donnell that's kind of primarily used now? Right. So, but but it's interesting because Deneen has some of the older uh, words in it that that. Um, mm -hmm that this doesn't have and, and the oh, descriptions of words that this doesn't have so interesting so you could even sit side by side with these two and see how the language changes in just 50 years right because we had a we were reading a story and the term har lar came up mm -hmm. in the story which um i looked it up in o'donnell and it just said overseas but lar l-e-a-r is, is only used in that phrase, har lar. There's lots of words for sea, mir, and different words. Mm -hmm. um, but lar, you would never see lar outside of har lar. It always means overseas. Oh, interesting. And so this Deneen. So it's in the Deneen. Goes into the, why it's called har lar. It had to do with um, the mythological um, leer. L I thought of R. Uh -huh. And he was in the north, and anything beyond where he was was overseas. So that's oh fascinating. It, it's yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. And then another person said, one of our other Irish teachers said it had to do with King Lear, which could be because um relating Lear to Lear. Okay. So that maybe King Lear. So it's based on that mythological Jill. Lear there, who definitely predates him. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it's kind of, it's all it's all fascinating. I find oh it wow, very interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a that's a good thing to point out, though. That's a good thing for people to know when they're using resources, is to be mindful of how the language may have changed over time. Right. Oh, sure. Yeah. And it, it also causes a lot of us to go down rabbit holes. <laughs> you know, you can start researching something and then it just goes around yeah. and down and down. Well, and down. if you need a rabbit hole, I, we have we have many. We have them in abundance here. <laughs> and I, yeah, I have to remember when I'm cataloging it's not to oh, read the book. I'm I like, know. No, stop with. <laughs> yes. I know when Joe and I are here together every once in a while see something and call Joe, Joe, did you see this? And then we spend another 10 minutes on. Yeah, but that's part of the fun. And that's, you know, knowing the collection like that is helpful when people come in to ask right. about it too. So yeah. yeah, all that reading is actually good. So, what else have you got? Because this, this uh, one's even thicker, you know, they're getting thicker as we go. Well, this is, well, this was a, I don't know, this was, this was a, an old, um, in, in the old um, format. Uh, uh -huh. Plus, I oh, I should have showed brought that. The old format has, um, you know, the, the different symbols that we. Uh, oh, I forgot. Got it in my. Yeah, it's okay if you want to go get it. It's okay. Or yeah. So this is um, another dictionary that, that Carol's uh, brought out. Uh, by a different editor, and I don't know because we've got the the protective plastic on here. If, if I can show it properly, but it's got a beautiful detail. Um, 
and this is L. Mc, uh, McCronick. It looks like the, um, this author is, uh, it's got the initials SJ after his name. So he's in the clergy somewhere, um, but I forget how that is placed. So this one was originally published in 1935. And I don't have my sheet, so forget that topic. Oh, okay. Well, we can, sorry. <laughs> that, that'll be for the next show. Yes, we'll, we'll have a copy of the sheet and, you know, maybe we should publish it. Maybe you should make a copy of that and we'll put it on, uh, careful. <laughs> that was almost the dehumidifier is uh, lonely, I think. Um, so this book is intended, as the title suggests, to do for the Irish language much the same as an English-French or English-German dictionary does for French or German. It does not aim at giving all Irish equivalents for all English words and phrases. Such completeness is impossible in the case of any two languages, but merely at providing help for those who may wish to write modern Irish. And he goes on to say, in certain respects, this dictionary will be found much less complete than similar ones of other languages. This could hardly be helped. It is in the living Irish language that one has to seek for equivalents of English words. And this language, unfortunately, is in a state of arrested growth. But if you look at my hand, <laughs> it gives you an idea of the size of the volume. And it's got beautiful, beautiful type. So when you come in to do your translations, you'll have lots of, lots and lots of options. Oh, and Carol's pulling out some really fun, um, some other fun pieces for us. That's for you, Jennifer. That's to get you going. Oh, this one's to get me going? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably right where I should be starting. Something that looks like it's a graphic novel. <laughs> oh, oh, and it's got a CD at the back. And I still have a desktop computer that has a CD reader. Oh, this is wonderful. Look at this. See, I wasn't that far off with the graphic novel analogy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this one. These illustrations. <laughs> So, oh, perfect. And this is cataloged, so it will remain here. So uh, I can use it in my spare time. And uh, anyone that wants to come down and spend a little time, I'm happy to photocopy some of these pages or, you know, bring your notebook and work. Or if you know, anybody's work, work interested, inside. they could come in and let me know when we could come in and have a little introduction. Oh, that. that would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah Carol's usually um, usually in with me on uh, the fourth Friday of the month. We were lucky to get her today because she has other commitments, so she's not going to be here tomorrow. But that would be a great thing to start up, I think. Yeah, yeah, um, just let us know. A little Irish I'll, language I'll meet and greet. Here. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Well, I, oh well, this this is, oh my god! I don't know why I pulled this one off. It's, it, it, it's a very it uh, jumped out at you meaty, meaty. Quite I I see that. Oh my goodness! What did you do to us here? Grammar of Old Irish by someone whose name looks like he's um, you know potentially a Dublin Dane. <laughs> yes. It's, well, there's Old Irish. I forget. There was a separation from Old Irish to Modern Irish, mm -hmm. probably having to do with one of the many um, invasions that happened. To right. Ireland. But that, I wouldn't even oh. hesitate. I'd hesitate to even <laughs> go into yeah. one. But it looks like he's actually been working in this field for quite some time because one of his first publications. It looks like appeared in 1909. Oh. And this particular um, grammar was published in 1946. This, this is a reprint. This is a later reprint, but it was, a, but it was first published in 1946. So it's got translator's notes, orthography, phonology, stress, vowels, diphthongs, vowel changes and stress. Okay, so this really, 
goes through purely vocalic sounds, sometimes vocalic, sometimes con consonantal. I think, wow, someone who's interested in linguistics would really like it. Re yeah. I'm interested in it, but it takes a lot to, yeah, to study. So. Oh, 491. Well, that would definitely be the language section. Ah. <laughs> I think a lot of hers are 491 I'm something. I'm glad you know your numbers because <laughs> I do not know my numbers. Well, I have the advantage of also, you know, being at the middle school and we use Dewey right. there too. And I'm constantly helping the kids find things, uh, and putting things back where they belong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So, and we've got, looks like well, we've got one more today. Well, I don't, I'm sorry. Oh, that's, no, this, this is one fun. Is, this one is an, um, oh gosh, it has peg in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said oh. she's, <laughs> it's a, a conversations, it looks like. Oh, with between peg and, um, I don't know, touch. It's interesting. I'm not sure. It's, oh, so like so a many, podcast in print. I guess so. like an interview or a conversation. Yeah, you can see. Oh yeah. So oh and this this is that beautiful. So this would have been typeset because I'm seeing the tell me the name again, the little dot. The bullya. The bullya. The bull bull is a word that means a verb that means to strike, to hit. Yeah. So I'm gonna put this up on screen, try to level it out. There we go. But look at that beautiful type. And well, and I can feel the impression. The paper's nice and thick. I can feel the impression of the, oh. the type in the page. This oh, is nice. and this the stitching. Yeah, this is this is nicely put together. I think mean, it's interesting to see all these books and then think about the people who donated the books and right. they were and what they got out of them and yeah and and some we know and some we don't um oh this and this has a beautiful book plate in the front um now this was published in probably the early 1900s let me see if i can get to a date 1907 well you know your books jennifer now, <laughs> some of my instructors uh, in my library program would be disappointed if I didn't know how to <laughs> read title pages and find, you know, find some of that information by now, even if it is in somebody else's language. Um, but, but you knew ahead of time by touching it when it was published. You oh, said the early 1900s, and then sure enough, it was the early 1900s. You know, my mother's got a number of friends, and you know, Kathleen walk up here um, as a bookbinder, and it, my mom's got some, some friends that are, you know, bookbinders and typesetters also, and so, you know, papers and just kind of fascinate me, and I, I grew up in and around antique stores, but this, if I can hold it up, this, this is, I don't know. This looks like it was added later. This might be a stamp, but up in the corner, you know, is is somebody's work with a fountain pen. Ah, and you can see how it how it changes the uh, thin to thick. Um, probably the original owner, and you know, again, I have to show this because the work is just. We go if I keep it centered. Look at that. Look at that detail. Yeah, this is. And and when I pull it back, it's about the size of a of a half dollar on the page. But with that level of, of artwork, I just this is wonderful. And maybe it's a little more cheerful. Oh, it looks like this has a note. I don't know if you can read it. Looks like there's a note in some of the conversation there. The wallet hands handle wallet. I can. Now it's hard to read. <laughs> Looks like somebody was maybe translating this, but oh, so making making some notes themselves as they go. Because I don't see a lot of writing in that book, but every once mm -hmm. in a while, there's just 
a couple of really fine notations. Doesn't that just feel now that good? you know, make yeah bring attention to it? It's quite something. Yes, quite yeah. different than modern ones. This yeah. is very nice. Well, that and that's a perfect one to end on. We have uh, used our our time for the day. Thank you so much for coming down and being willing to go through these with me. My Hopefully pleasure. We'll we'll have you. Uh, back again for another edition. Mm -hmm. Sheila, thanks for joining us. Did you have any questions for us before we we head out and say goodbye? I don't have a question, but I have a, a language related little anecdote I could tell, okay. even though it's not Irish, but you're talking about not being able to typeset certain things because they didn't exist on the typewriter. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Philippine American author whose last name is escaping me right now, but I heard him speak once. And he was talking about, he had a book published, his middle name is Jose. And uh, one of the editors said, wait, wait, we're ready to go to press, but don't you need an accent on the E in Jose? And he said, no, because I'm the product of Spanish colonialism and American imperialism. Therefore, although I'm Filipino, my name is Juan Jose, but when the Americans came, their we had to use their typewriters and there were no accents. So my name is Jose without an accent. Ah, okay, good point. I was thinking about well, the type. It's not together. just a. Yeah, so it's it's interesting. It's you th would think that the typesetting would not be an indicator of history, but it is. It is. Yes. To, look at whose like, typewriter got to tell the story. Right. <laughs> That's very true. Yes, like German, they have yeah. the money to have their own. You know, they have lots of markings umlauts and all that yeah and, uh, the poor irish and the poor filipinos <laughs> not yeah, so much and the americans that don't like any of those right <laughs> like no we don't need extra marks over the letter thanks <laughs> great oh well thank you for sharing that sheila yeah, that's that awesome great, sheila. Uh, i love that story that, and that i heard it straight from him so so verified source we like that in a library right <laughs> Awesome. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. That wraps this edition of Biscuits and Books, and we will see you next month. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.